I would not say the white man is a descendant of Satan, uh, because that would be wrong. We didn't have a Satan before white man. So the white man is Satan himself. Hamid speak, World Wide News. Hamid speak. Hamid speak. Hamid speak. We cannot have freedom as long as the white man is ruling. What kind of freedom can we have if the white man is the president of this country and the Senate is the uh, white and the governors of all states is white and the court is ruled by white? What uh, can we uh, uh, say uh, of us in the way of freedom in a country like America's? Oh, my friend, it's easy to tell. White man heaven is a black man hell. The address is 2118 Violet Drive, Phoenix, Arizona. Primarily because he suffers from bronchial asthma, it's from this house rather than the official headquarters in Chicago that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, messenger of Allah to the so-called American Negroes, directs by telephone and courier the cult popularly known as the Black Muslims, a movement which seeks to be totally separate from white America. I'm Buzz Anderson of KQED, and I can assure you that when approaching Elijah Muhammad's house for the first time, one has a sense of being watched. Yes. Good morning. This is Mr. Anderson and Mr. Moore from San Francisco. Okay. Thank you. Our purpose was to talk with the rarely interviewed Muslim leader about what the Muslims believe and to determine, if possible, why these beliefs have caused from 50 to 100,000 Negroes to join the Muslim organization. Apart from the star and crescent and the portrait of W.D. Farad, the Muslim Messiah, we could have been in any prosperous middle-class living room in America. Elijah Muhammad's house is situated in a newly developed, predominantly Negro neighborhood in Phoenix. New, clean, and exceedingly neat, the neighborhood symbolizes many of the values so strongly emphasized by Messenger Muhammad. At the same time, this is obviously not a Muslim neighborhood. Nearby are all the symbols of the white man, his schools, the white man's Christianity, forbidden food, the Muslims have a strict prohibition against eating pork, and the symbols of that vanity and love of pleasure which are frowned upon by the puritanically oriented Muslims. In this rather typical suburban neighborhood dominated by Elijah Muhammad's seven-bedroom house, I suddenly remembered the words of the Muslim song, the white man's heaven is the black man's hell. So, my friend, it's easy to tell. You know where that white man heaven, black man hell. But on the hard streets of the Negro ghettos in America, far from the soft carpets of Elijah's mansion, the words of Elijah the messenger are heard through the Muslim newspaper, through an increasing number of mosques. There are at least 37. And on more than 30 radio stations from New York to San Francisco. Our God and Savior, Allah has come. He has declared the white man's day is done. He has given us a divine messenger. One prophesied to come. His name is Elijah. It is a truth that makes us to know the white man as he is. It is not uh, 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 other than the truth. It's just the real truth. We never did know the real truth. So now we know the white man as he is. And if the white man said that I am teaching hatred, it is just to say, I didn't want you to tell them who I was. The story but of Elijah Muhammad is one of the strangest chapters in that great American tragedy, which is the story of the black man in this country. However, as writer-lecturer Louis Lomax, author of The Negro Revolt and a book on the black Muslims in America titled When the Word is Given, points out, The black Muslims are something that had to happen in America. After all, we, the American Negro, are the residual of 500 years of first slavery and then segregation. It was inevitable, I suppose, that, in fact, I know, that one day 
that the Negro would produce a man who would come along and say, my God is bigger than your God, and he can slay your God, and even if he can't slay your God, we will not bow down and serve your God. The same God didn't make the white man that made us. The white man made just 6,000 years ago, and we was made uh, uh, unlimited. We don't know nothing about any birth record for us. You can't find no history that will give you the birth of the black man. He has always been. Well, then, since we have no beginning or no end for the black man, what is your doctrine on the origin of the Caucasian race? Caucasian is a name given to the uh, uh, quality of the man. Uh, it means, uh, originally, uh, weak bone and stale face, you know. Uh, the person have a stale color and his bones are weak and they call him Caucasian. But uh, actually he was made white. Uh, this was brought about 6,000 years ago. And a uh, black man, uh, uh, he is the father of the Caucasian race. His name was Yakub. He uh, discovered in the germ of the black man that there were two people. And in studying the germ, he uh, learned to divide the germ. It taken him 600 years to keep marrying this lighter one on to the lighter one until he produced the, we say, they pack up the whole thing. That is pale white. He did it by, birth, uh, uh, by using the birth control law. Therefore, and uh, uh, we have today now a brown race, yellow race, and a red race, and a white race. And uh, Black is the original. He's the father of, uh, of them all. So Elijah argues that Black is the basic color, and that from Black you can get all the others, but from none of the others combined can you get Black. Therefore, Black is prime. Therefore, Black is first. And if it was first, it is good. And if it is good, it is God. And therefore, if it is God, the antithesis of God is evil, and the antithesis of black is white. Therefore, the white man is a snake and a devil, and the black man is chosen in God's image. It is time for divine intervention, because we cannot deal with the American white man's army and uh, his science of uh, modern warfare. We can't compete with him. So therefore, if we are dissatisfied, <coughs> we have to take our dissatisfaction to one who can deal with him effectively, and that's God. Elijah Muhammad has really come up with nothing new. If you take the first five books of the Old Testament and everywhere it says Jew, you write Negro, you get Elijah Muhammad. My mission to my people here is life to them. And what I bring them out of into this is death. And uh, my, my mission is the last uh, of, of the scientists or uh, the truth that is to come to the world before the world is destroyed. You will not have no other uh, messenger. I am the last one. And uh, behind me come God himself. When you speak of the world being destroyed by fire, you mean the white man's world. That's right. That's right. It will burn. Uh, this is the only place, though. Not Europe. Nowhere but right, up, right here in America. This place will be uh, the one that... Uh, uh, the Bible refers to as a lake of fire. America, not even South America. Uh, <clears throat> it it won't be. It will be affected, but it won't be burned. But this place here will be uh, set afire divinely by uh, the exploding of atoms, 
and uh, <coughs> it will cause all what we have here now as atmosphere, we call it. It all will be far. No atmosphere, no water, nowhere in there. All far. And it will uh, reach to the height of 12 miles. And that it will burn uh, for 390 years. And after 390 years, it will take it 600 and 10 years to cool off and uh, start growing vegetation here again. And in all, it'll be a thousand years before ever that uh, human life can live here where you and I are now living. Then only those who have accepted Allah and Allah has accepted them will be saved. Now, when, when does this fire come? <laughs> That's like asking me, when is the day of judgment? That's the end, uh, brother, when that takes place. Uh, that's known only to Allah. Muhammad speaks. This principle of highly selective destruction is nothing new in theology. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah. Mindful of impending destruction, the young elite of the Muslim movement, known as the Fruit of Islam, carry the message of separation, of pride, and of self-help to the American Negro. This work of attempted conversion is known as fishing. Every Sunday morning at 6.30. 106.9 megacycles. KMPX. When a man says he don't believe in Islam, that's a man that don't believe in God. And a man say, I will not be a Muslim. It's a man that is telling the world, I will not submit to the will of God. But they don't know that. I just don't want no Muhammad. Check this here then. Check it out. Come out to some meet meeting sometime. We have a meeting tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Really? 1872 post. Yeah. You want to come over and see what Mr. Muhammad is doing about me? I don't want to see what Mr. Muhammad is doing. Why don't you take one of the papers and read it then? I ain't going to pay you for no paper. <laughs> you want to check it out, sister? No, I'm not, brother. They, they don't even don't take time to ask you what the name means. They don't know. And don't ask for the meaning. So we have <clears throat> uh, here 98% uh, of our people, they even have not even never heard of Islam. O oh Allah, guide me among those whom thou hast guided the earth, and preserve me among those whom thou hast preserved, and befriend me among those whom thou hast befriended. Bless me in whatsoever thou dost bless me and deliver me from the evil of what thou hast judged. Surely thy judges and none can judge against thee, and he whom thou befriendest is not disgraced. Blessed art thou, Lord, and exalted be thee above what they set up besides thee. I bear witness, nothing deserves to be served besides thee. And I bear witness that Muhammad is thy servant um. In the Negro Revolt, I make the comment that whenever you find a Negro who is not schizoid, he's crazy. You have to kind of be buggy to be black and be sane in America. And I think the great thing about Elijah, about eating at Elijah's table, is that this is this sort of bugginess. This is, this is what America has done to us. This is what America has made us. James Baldwin so poignantly and correctly and eloquently points out, when you sit at Elijah's table, you are sitting at America's table. Elijah is what America made him. You know, we only eat uh, once a day, and uh, we, uh, we can really go some because... <laughs> <laughs> We have 24 hours between the meals. 
Are there five required prayers or seven? Well, they are five actually required. And so Elijah Muhammad has come along and he's taken the traditional Islamic faith as a sort of springboard. And he used the theological trappings of traditional Islam. But around these trappings, he, or to use better syntax, upon these trappings, he superimposed the experience of the American Negro. Do you urge your followers to vote? I can't urge my followers to vote. Uh, uh, for a change of the white man's way of life and the way of his government. That's his. And there is no need for me to tell you uh, to vote for Mr. Jones or Mr. Johnson. I can't tell you that either one will give to you what you want. You want to be equal with Mr. Johnson or Mr. Jones. And that can't be done. And why should I tell you to vote uh, that he will give you this? Because he can't do it. There is no white man in America today can uh, go to Washington and give the so-called American Negro uh, equal rights. He can't do it. Or in terms he, can, uh, he can promise it to him, but he have his own people to contend with. Equal rights will mean giving some earth, too. You can't be equal uh, uh, by living on the white man's soil. This is his country. Why should you uh, be deceived by uh, a president or a candidate for president uh, saying he will give you equal rights when you can't get no equal rights. No fully equal rights is here for you unless they are going to do this. <clears throat> give to you some portion of the country and give to you the rights to uh, set up your own government for yourself and your own people since that by nature you are different. Will violence or force be a necessary means to, say, gain this land and these civil rights? No politician or no leader of our people speaking of arming our people with guns to get uh, uh, justice from the white man in America would be successful and he is uh, ignorant to do a such thing and he's only causing the murder of his own unarmed and ignorant people. If you're going to depend on arms, you have to get arms superior to your enemy's arm, or arms equal. And then you have to be equally trained or better trained how to use that arm and how to take advantage of the enemy on land, sea, and in air. And therefore, you don't have that. So why should I say to you as a leader, get your shotgun, get your rifle, and go out there and kill white men? I would be telling you to commit suicide. This is the December 20th, 1963 issue of Muhammad Speaks published every two weeks in Chicago. On page three, this item appeared. It's a report that Elijah Muhammad from his home in Phoenix telephoned the newspaper ordering that a statement be placed on page one. The report goes on to say that the paper had already gone to press and that the statement could not be published until two weeks later in the next edition. The statement reads, we with the world are very shocked at the assassination of our president. Meanwhile, a widely publicized statement about the assassination had been made by Malcolm X, then chief public spokesman for the Muslim. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad responded by suspending Malcolm and publishing this statement. When Minister Malcolm addressed the public and mentioned the president's death, he did not speak for Muslims. He was speaking for himself and not for Muslims in general. He has been suspended from public speaking for the time being. 
the nation still mourns the loss of our president. Malcolm's statement was that the assassination was a case of the chickens coming home to roost. Malcolm has since left the Muslim organization and has established his own organization in Harlem. Malcolm uh, uh, actually uh, was discovered long before he was suspended. I only suspended him for a time. I only tried him because I knew that he was not going to accept it. And I said, just keep quiet for 90 days. And he would not do it. And I knew he would not do it because he felt that he would be losing his prestige. Malcolm has claimed that many of your followers have left and chosen to follow him and his organization. That's no truth at all. Malcolm has left, all, uh, <coughs> left his own uh, organization and teachings. Uh, and uh, in fact about it, we don't see where that we have missed any of our followers by Malcolm's deviation. He, in fact about it, uh, has increased our followers. We uh, have more followers today than we had when Malcolm was with us, and we have more unity than we had when Malcolm was with us. I think dissension took place within the Muslim movement, and I think Malcolm was being forced out. Malcolm had become the most articulate spokesman. After all, the Muslims have been around since 1930. Nobody heard about them until, of course, Malcolm X got out of jail. And then, of course, the Muslims broke. So the Muslims and Malcolm X became one and the same thing. At the deviation of Malcolm, I'm not surprised, but that they cannot yet say that I am not the messenger of Allah. They can't take that away from me. Although the ultimate appeal may be to Allah, there is a great deal of very practical capitalistic energy being directed toward the solution of everyday economic problems. For example, Elijah Muhammad has always encouraged the development of Muslim business enterprises. And in the August 28th edition of Muhammad Speaks, he announced a three-year economic program and plans for the development of a black national bank. We should try to save, if it's nothing but a nickel a day, uh, in something like a national uh, savings to help fight poverty and want among us. And uh, in so doing, we would uh, ease a lot of suffering that we are now undergoing if we just had a little of our earnings put up for that purpose. We have no rights to go around and fight the white man to move inside neighbors. We should go to work and take that money and buy areas for ourselves, where he is not, say, uh, taking over for his own resident. Buy it from him if he will sell it to us. And if he don't sell it to us, then it is time then to take that money and try to buy your area somewhere else. On the back of each issue of Muhammad Speaks, you will find this statement. We want our people in America, whose parents or grandparents were descendants from slaves, to be allowed to establish a separate state or territory of their own, either on this continent or elsewhere. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to provide such land and that the area must be fertile and minerally rich. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to maintain and supply our needs in this separate territory for the next 20 to 25 years until we are able to produce and supply our own needs. Is this an idea that will attract more and more American Negroes? Or is it another cultist pie-in-the-sky notion? At a press conference, I had occasion to talk with Congressman Adam Clayton Powell about the Muslim. I don't agree with him. Never have. But I don't consider him to be dangerous. In my district, for instance, in Harlem, we haven't got more than a thousand Muslims. Well, then the comparative strength in Harlem is very little. In oh, very little. Very little. And uh, there they had their um, most brilliant and most uh, uh, fluent uh, leader, Malcolm X. Well, now, uh, since Malcolm split with Elijah Muhammad, uh, what is his acceptance in Harlem? How do people feel about Malcolm? They're waiting for him to come back. 
For what reason? Well, a lot of people want to talk to him. They want to know why, after all these years of proclaiming one philosophy, he has suddenly shifted now into a different philosophy. And a lot of his young men, the Fruit of Islam group, they have become disillusioned with him and with the uh, uh, other movement, the Black Muslim movement, because they only went into the Black Muslim movement, many of them because of Malcolm X, and things are rather chaotic. It is my own prediction that now that Malcolm is out of the movement, that they will return soon to the oblivion from which they came. I attended a Muslim rally in uh, New York City at the Audubon Ballroom. And they had about some 5,000 Negroes jam-packed into this place. And Elijah, of course, was to speak. But before Elijah spoke, they brought on his son, Akhba Muhammad, who is, of course, studying at Al-Azhar University in Cairo. And Akhba walked onto the stage of the Audubon in the formal dress of an upper-class Muslim which meant he was draped in a white sheet with the white turban around his head. And an old Negro woman from Mississippi sitting behind me said, my God, he looks just like the Ku Klux Klan to me. The point is, no white man, or a black man for that matter, draped in a white sheet will ever sell the American Negro anything. The real power of the Muslims does not lie in their numerical strength but in the fact that they are able to tap a number of deep and powerful currents which are a consequence of the Negroes' experience of segregation in America. One, the Muslims exploit the idea of separation, which to some Negroes seems to be the only way out. And two, the Muslims are not only able to give voice to the anger and hatred felt by some Negroes, they promise retribution against the white man as well. The white man is the by nature, not the black man, and the black man by nature is not the white man. And you can't make no brotherhood there. There's nothing really new about the black Muslims. The only new thing is that at long last the American Negro has produced somebody, let's face it, a theological gestalt which allows them to say the same things about white people which white people have been saying about Negroes and non-white people all of their lives. So-called Negro, open up your eyes Black man everywhere is on the rise He has kicked the white man out of Asia And he's going fast out of Africa With every ounce of strength and breath his cry is give us liberty or give us death The whole black world has their eyes on you To see what the so-called Negro is going